Atrial fibrillation is the most common adult arrhythmia, significant adult arrhythmia that we manage. So it is extremely prevalent, and it's a very, very common cause of stroke in patients in the United States. Irrespective of whether or not you have symptoms or not, uh, this is a rhythm that has to be managed, and one of the principal means of management is to reduce the risk of stroke because atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke fivefold higher than patients without atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation is a rhythm that occurs in the top chambers of the heart, the atria. It's essentially an electrical storm that occurs in those chambers, whereby with that electrical activity, there's not effective contraction of the atrial tissue. The atria then effectively don't contract blood down into the ventricles as quickly or as briskly as they should. They fibrillate, which is a, basically which means that they quiver. And what happens with that electrical storm, blood stays or pools in the left atria or in the atrial tissue, the atrial chambers, and f clots can form as a result of that stasis. And then if a clot were to be pumped out of the heart, were to break off, liberate, or, or transit out of the heart into the brain, that would of course cause a stroke. The clot could also travel to the arms, the legs, the extremities, the vital tissues, and cause tissue damage there as well as that clot then travels and occludes a blood vessel that it's traveling in. Patients who have atrial fibrillation who then have other risk factors for stroke, such as advanced age, diabetes, history of smoking, high blood pressure, those patients would then be commonly recommended to be put on an anticoagulant blood thinner medication to prevent stroke. We know that there's tremendous evidence supporting the use of those blood thinner medications to reduce the risk of stroke. Unfortunately, not everyone can tolerate being on those medications. They're very potent medications. And as a matter of fact, the number one cause for patients to be admitted to the hospital from a medication side effect or present to the emergency room from an adverse event related to a medication is from one of those types of medications, one of those anticoagulant medications. So very potent. They do a good job in preventing stroke, but they have side effects. Namely, they, they cause bleeding. And uh, not only spontaneous bleeding, but you know, God forbid you were to hit your head or have a traumatic event, whatever injury you would suffer would be exponentially compounded potentially by the fact that you're on a blood thinner. What has transpired really over the last two decades is uh, technologies that have been directed to exclude a little pouch in the heart called the left atrial appendage. And this little pouch is a finger-like projection that originates from the left atrium, the top left chamber of the heart, and it's a blind pouch that serves no known biological purpose. But this is the place where more than 90% of the blood clots form in atrial fibrillation that cause stroke. So these technologies, which have included surgical technologies as well as percutaneous or minimally invasive techniques, have been designed to exclude, cap off, or remove the appendage this troublesome little pouch. It serves no known purpose. It doesn't help the heart to beat, contract, or conduct. Um, however, it is the area, the site at which these blood clots form, and therefore, by removing it, that you can do a patient service by reducing their risk of stroke. And recently, there have been developed uh, techniques that are minimally invasive that use uh, a device that's inserted through a small incision in the skin, through the, through the leg. And these devices, there are two commercially available devices, the Amulet and Watchman device. These devices are inserted through a small catheter, which is a small medical tube advanced, again, through the skin of the leg in a patient who's under twilight anesthesia. So they're under conscious sedation. Uh, the device is carefully directed using that catheter into the left atrial appendage, and it opens up almost like an umbrella. And similar like an umbrella uh, with a frame, and then there's fabric. If you think of the top of an umbrella, there's, there's fabric on top of that frame. So it opens up inside the appendage like an umbrella would open, and it gets released into the appendage. And that fabric promotes skin tissue to grow over the surface of the device, thereby completing the seal of the left atrial appendage. We watch the patient for three to four hours after the procedure is complete, and then the patients are discharged to home. One of the aspects of our program is that we've incorporated advanced imaging as part of our pre-procedural planning process, and that allows us to get very close, accurate, uh, detailed images of the heart, of the structures of the heart, and specifically 
of the left atrial appendage. This is a very complicated three-dimensional structure that has multiple different sizes and shapes depending on the person. It's as unique as your thumbprint. And so by understanding the architecture, we can choose better the right size device. And because of our unique situation and having a hybrid operating room adjacent to our CT angiography suite, we're now bringing patients in for the CT scan, having the images interpreted, reviewing the images, coming up with our plan in a huddle, as, so to speak, and then moving the patient directly to the table and doing the procedure in that same setting. So it sort of becomes this one-stop shopping where patients are able to get everything done on the same day. Really what that's a convenience for the patient. We have a 99.7% success rate for left atrial appendage closure in our program. More than 90% of the patients uh, at university hospitals are discharged home uh, following the procedure on the same day.